What's up you guys, it's Levi here. Welcome to the Cybersecurity Education Channel. Today we got a special request from one of my friends. So here's a request from my friend. He sent me a message, he's like, I don't understand VPNs, what they are, how they work, why I would want one, and how to set one up. You should do an episode on VPNs. Well, today you're in for a treat because I'm going to do an episode on VPNs for you and our entire audience on this channel. I'll be going through all of those topics that, that he asked questions on, as well as I'll also talk about the downsides of VPNs at the end of this video. I really like submissions like these, and I want you guys to get more involved in submitting ideas for video topics as well. So if you guys have a video topic, go ahead and post them down in the comments below. Um, I'll also post my email address in the in the description down below so you can email that if you don't want it publicly and I'll try to do the best that I can to um, do a video on whatever topic you want to learn more about um, this channel is for you guys so if you guys have any topics I would love to address those issues all right so getting into VPN first of all I'm going to show you um, what a normal connection looks like and then we'll move on and we'll show you a VPN connection and talk about why a VPN is going to be beneficial to you all right so here is a very very basic example of what a normal connection is to the internet if you do not have a VPN connection. Obviously it's a lot more complicated but I want to dumb it down for you guys so you guys can understand it. All right so here we have your device. It can be any type of device. It can be an iPhone, an iPad, it can be a computer, it can be a Mac, any type of device. Um, when you normally go out and connect to the internet you're going to connect out to your ISP internet service provider uh, basically they provide your connection um, out to the internet so you connect to them and then whatever web page or app you're going to then they connect and go to that app and web page on your behalf so what's a vpn connection look like all right so here we have a vpn connection and there's actually two different types of vpn connection in this video we're going to be talking more of a personal VPN connection. Um, there's also a business-like VPN connection. Um, I'll talk about that at the end of this section. So this is a personal VPN connection here. <laughs> so basically, you got the same thing to start out. Um, you have your device here, which is actually this whole thing. Um, and, and just like previously, it can be any device that you have. Um, but this time, we are going to have a VPN client installed on that device. And what that VPN client allows is it allows for you to connect to a VPN provider of your choice right here. Um, and then that VPN provider actually has a, a bunch of different servers and different locations that you can pick and connect to. So I don't know if you guys can read this, but um, they have, it can potentially have a server in Atlanta, it can have one in the United Kingdom, in Canada, Denver, Chicago, Dallas, um, anywhere in the world that they have servers set up. Uh, the VPN provider just provides the service to be able to connect to the various servers that they have. And then once you get to, once you connect to one of these servers that they have, then you're able to access the app and the web page through those servers. As you can see in the diagram down here, we no longer have the ISP in here. The ISP would still be in between this connection here, but instead of seeing all of your traffic going to various apps and websites like up here, um, they're only able to see that you're connecting to the VPN provider. They're not able to see uh, what apps and websites you're going to. That's the biggest difference between a normal connection and a VPN connection. On a normal connection, uh, the ISP is able to see all of the websites that you're connecting to. On a VPN connection, the ISP can only see the VPN provider that you're connecting to and they can't see anything else because VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and it creates a secure tunnel right here between you and the VPN provider and nothing in between that can see anything but the connection between those two. So I talked about a, vis a business VPN. If you work for a business, basically it allows for you to be able to connect into your business. 
and be a part of the same network as your business. Um, and the VPN provider is actually the business instead of an external source. So you would still have the VPN client on your computer more than likely, um, but then the business that you're connecting to would just be that business. And then you would be seen as part of that business network so that you can do business activities on behalf of that network. That's a little bit beyond the scope of, of this section, but I just wanted you guys to be aware of that. <laughs> All right, so now moving on to the good stuff. What's the problem and why would you wanna use a VPN? The number one issue with a normal connection is your ISP can see any website that you're going to. They can see um, that you're going to google.com. They can see that you're going to facebook.com. Think of all the privacy issues that you could have. For one instance, let's say that you have a severe medical condition and you're going to a website that's very specifically targeted for users for that specific medical condition and you don't want people to know about it. Um, <laughs> your ISP, could take that information and see that you're going to that website and they could po potentially where you're located at in the world, they could sell that information to an insurance company and use that information against you to raise your rates. So that's one privacy concern. Um, another privacy concern would be if you're a journalist, a researcher, um, an activist, and you're going to websites that are considered uh, very sensitive subjects and you don't want your ISP to know and you don't want potentially the government to be able to figure out because the ISP could get those logs to the government and then the government could, be, could use that against you depending on where you live at in the world as well. Uh, so a VPN connection helps protect your privacy in those situations. So yeah, a VPN is very beneficial in these situations because it allows you to bypass the ISP logging, which really helps with privacy. But I know what you guys are saying. Well, Levi, can't the VPN provider get the same logs and see what you're doing, see what you're connecting to? That's a very good point. But if you're using a credible VPN provider, they don't keep logs. They're located in locations that um, they don't, they aren't required to keep logs. Like ExpressVPN, they're located in the Virgin Islands and the Virgin Islands doesn't require them to keep logs. So that's why they are more secure than your ISP. All right, so continuing the privacy discussion, um, another privacy issue is um, you're, you're given an IP address by your ISP um, that is able to, it can be used for identification for you. Um, the IP address will change periodically, but there's ways for apps and web pages to be able to track that information back to your device and track and be able to track you on what you're doing. Um, and then not only that, they're able to track your location because it gives a very close range of where you're located. So by using a VPN connection, um, they're not going to be able to see your IP address. They're gonna see an IP address of one of these servers that's connecting to the app and web page or that all the users on this VPN provider are using. So it's being shared by potentially thousands and thousands of users depending on what type of provider you're using. The more users that are on it, the better the privacy is for you because the IP address will be shared so often. It also gives you the ability to change your location where you wanna be and it gives you the ability based off of that location to give yourself a different IP address if you want. So that's another big privacy benefit of VPNs. The app and web page aren't gonna see your IP address. They're gonna see the IP address of whatever server you're, you're connecting to on the VPN provider. And then the final privacy thing is privacy should be a right for people. Um, so just because you're not doing something bad, um, you, if you want to make sure to maintain that right of privacy, a VPN is a big step in being able to do that, especially if you're in a country where government, where a gov the government is tracking the ISP and looking to see what you're looking into. The next issue that you could have with a normal connection um, when you're traveling is um, most of the time you're going to be connecting to a wireless access point or um, if you're at a hotel you might plug in a cable but then there's this issue 
between your device and the ISP when you're traveling that somebody can set up a, a fake access point that you connect to in between there and the ISP. And then that person that's in between here can see all the information that you're sending that's not encrypted and they can see whatever app and web page you're going to and they can interrupt that traffic and potentially inject things into that traffic uh, causing problems for you. Well, a VPN connection like we talked about before is a direct connection between the device and the VPN provider. So that man, the per, if somebody tries to get in the middle of that connection, they're only going to be able to see that you're connected to the VPN provider. Um, and this connection is encrypted, so they won't be able to see anything else. Um, they would have to break that encryption or break the encryption mechanism to be able to see what you're sending. So it gives you extra security while you're traveling by using a VPN. All right, so the next problem with a normal connection is if you live in a country um, where content is being blocked. Um, so let's say you're in South Africa and you want to be able to get to Netflix here. Uh, but Netflix isn't available in South Africa or the country won't let you get to Netflix. Um, a VPN connection will let you bypass that issue as long as you can get to these the, to the VPN provider. That's the key thing. Um, and then if you're in South Africa and you want to access Netflix, you'll connect to your VPN provider and you'll go to, let's say, Atlanta because it's in America and you can do Netflix in America. And then you'll be able to watch Netflix through that VPN provider as long as you have a strong enough internet connection and as long as you can get to the VPN provider. Um, and then also in a very similar manner, um, there's certain content that's restricted by region. So you might be able to see something on Netflix um, in the United States, but when you're in South Africa, that specific show is not available in South Africa because it's not licensed in South Africa. So then the same thing. You can you use your VPN, you connect to one of these servers, you connect into Atlanta or whatever in the United States, boom, you're able to access that content. And then finally, the last thing that's beneficial about VPNs is if for somebody that's trying to do illegal activity, um, obviously it can help cover their tracks because there's, there's, more, there's more information that law enforcement has to do to try to be able to track back to the person. It's not impossible to trace back to them, but it makes it very difficult. So I don't encourage people to do illegal activity, but um, there's certain activity in certain countries that is considered illegal um, that you might want to use a VPN for if you determine that, hey, you should be able to do this. Or if you're in a country um, where something is legal in the country that you came from and you're traveling and you want to be able to do that, you just have to be careful because you could be prosecuted for it. All right, so th those are kind of examples of why a VPN is important and the downsides of a normal connection. Uh, so now, now I'll be talking about how you, can, how you can set up a VPN. The first step of setting up a VPN is going to a VPN provider's website and signing up for that website. Um, I recommend two here. I recommend ExpressVPN and I recommend NordVPN. And the, the reason I recommend these two is because they've been the top recommended choices of the websites that I visited. And I personally use ExpressVPN. I've been using it for the last two years. It's worked great for me. I use it for streaming content that I can't get in the United States and it works excellent for me. So I highly recommend ExpressVPN. But I wanted to give you guys another option. NordVPN I've seen is very solid as well. And they both don't log your information, so that's good. They have solid connections. So um, here's the pricing on here. You can see NordVPN is slightly cheaper. Us VPN costs a little bit more, but um, I highly recommend that you guys go with it. I've had success with it, and it's worked well for me. So that's my recommendation to you guys, and that's what I'll be talking about, how to set that up. I'll post links down in the description below of where to go to sign up for these services. Um, I'll see if I can get a referral link so that you guys can get a discount uh, for clicking on that referral link and I'll get a discount because you guys clicked on that. Uh, so make sure you click on those links down below so if I'm able to find a referral link, uh, we both can get something out of that. So for ExpressVPN, um, obviously the first step is going and, and clicking the link down below and signing up. The next step is to go ahead and download the client uh, from Windows and Mac. 
you're basically going to sign up and then you're going to go click on the download button. After you sign up, you'll get to a page where you can download it and then run through the install. It's, it's pretty basic on the setup. Um, and then for Android and iOS devices, you'll see you'll go to their respective app stores and you'll look for ExpressVPN and you'll go and download it from there. And you'll see an icon that looks similar to this. And when you go to download it on both stores. Um, so then once you get installed on whatever device that you're installing it on, you'll go ahead and sign into ExpressVPN with the account that you created with them. And then they give you a code um, when you sign up that you need to put it in a prompt after you sign in. iOS and Android, I think there's a little bit further of a process. If you just follow along, you'll be able to get through that. Um, I think you have to set a fingerprint and stuff like that. Um, if you have any questions on how to install it, um, they have install guides on the sign up page or after the sign up page so that you can figure out how to install it. You can follow those. Um, once you finally get installed, you'll see a screen that looks like this that, should, that will come up on your devices when you open the application. Um, and you can see that you can select whatever location you want. So over on the left hand menu, there's different options. And you can see the United States expands out, expands out, Canada expands out, Brazil expands out, and then you can select different cities. Um, in the countries that expand out and the ones that don't expand out, you'll just have to select the one that's there. Um, and then once you select your city, you go ahead and press that red button to connect. It turns green and then boom, you're connected to one of these servers here. And then you're able to see the app and web page through the VPN provider service on what server that you, you selected. So now you can give yourself some privacy. You can browse the internet illegally. Just kidding. Don't do it unless it's justified if you're in a country where it, Something you're doing illegal should be legal. Um, <laughs> just don't say that you learned that from this video. Um, you can travel more securely by somebody not being able to intercept your connection. And you can do research and things like that without having to worry about somebody logging the sites that you're going to. Um, before I end this video, I wanted to talk about some of the downsides of using a VPN. Um, of course, there's always downsides to everything, unfortunately. I think the biggest thing you um, have to be careful with is to make sure that you pick a, a trusted VPN provider. If you pick the wrong provider, you could be worse off than, than if you're just going through a normal connection. They could do things with your data that they don't want, that you don't want them to do, I, I would be highly skeptical of free VPN providers. Um, there's no such thing as free. So I would, I would just avoid those make sure that you're paying for one and make sure you're using a legit source and you've done research on it. I highly advise you use ExpressVPN or NordVPN just because I vetted them and I know that they're good. So you guys can use those and know that they're good. So another problem with VPNs is your connection speed is going to be slower, which makes sense because you're not only connecting some through ISP to an app, to a web page, uh, you have to go through an extra hop to get to that web page. So the ISP is still sitting in between here, but then you have to go out to the server, which is located further away from you than your ISP is. It's gonna take a longer route, and then it has to go to that web page, and then it has to go back to that server through your ISP, and then back to you. And also because these servers are shared, um, these connections can be more bogged down. Uh, and then also, because of the distance of some of these VPN servers that you could be connecting to, like from the United Kingdom, it has to go not only from the United States to whatever server you're going to, it has to travel all the way out to the United Kingdom, and then has to come all the way back to the United States to you. And so obviously speed's gonna be a little bit slower. So if you're downloading an application, it it's going to take a lot longer. And if you're downloading a huge file, you might not want to do it on a VPN, especially if you don't care about if it's private or not. And then the other thing is too, if you're doing um, something that where the response times have to be super fast, like gaming, uh, VPN might not be the solution for that either. Cause if you're playing a shooting game or something like that, it might slow down the response so bad that when you shoot somebody, it doesn't register for them. So something to be aware of. The next issue is VPNs could be illegal in your jurisdiction. So if you're in an area where a VPN is illegal, you might not want to use a VPN. It might not be worth getting prosecuted for. Um, so I think China is one of the countries that bans VPNs. So if you're traveling to an area like that, um, you gotta be super 
super careful to check on the restrictions. Um, it's probably not worth getting prosecuted over. And then the final point that I want to make is a VPN can give you privacy, but it's not going to give you complete privacy. If you have malware on your system, if you have spyware on your system, if you have applications that are able to track you on your system, um, a VPN isn't going to protect you from that. It's not going to protect you if you're entering information into a site or you're logged into a site that can be traced back to you. So you can't think of a VPN as a complete privacy solution. It's just part of the solution. Um, there's other things that you have to do to give yourself more privacy as well, but this a VPN is a piece of the puzzle. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thank you for watching guys and have a great day.